हेलो स्टूडेंट्स नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट पार्ट टू ऑफ चैप्टर फर्स्ट इन द पार्ट फर्स्ट वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड अबाउट दिस क्रॉप एंड द सम एग्रीकल्चर प्रैक्टिस नाउ फर्स्ट वी विल डू द क्विक रिविजन ऑफ क्रॉप नाउ वॉट इज क्रॉप वेन प्लांट्स ऑफ द सेम काइंड आर ग्रोन एंड कल्टिवेटेड एट वन प्लेस ऑन अ लार्ज स्केल इट इज कॉल्ड अ क्रॉप For example, crop of wheat means that all the plants grown in a field are that of wheat. Now we will study the another agriculture practices that is protection or crop protection. So if we have grown the crop, the protection will be necessary. So see now we will see how can we protect our crop, and the method is called crop protection. this topic we will see how can we do the care for a growing crop first method is weeding you know what is weeding that weeding is the process to remove out the weeds or you can say weeding is the method to remove out the weeds are the unwanted plants which grown along the useful crops and it is required because these are competitive plants as they reduce the useful crop yield by acquiring space fertilizer and nutrients from the soil and with the presence of weeds sunlight will also not be reachable to the proper crop now again we will do the quick revision a weed is defined as a plant growing out of a place and what will be its characteristics first it grows faster than the crop it produces lots of seed with long viability it usually have some seed dormancy some can also reproduce vegetatively and some weeds have allopathy that means we can use some of the weeds also now here you can see a man is removing out the weed with the help of hand or you can say he is using the manually method for removing out the weeds tool which you are seeing here that is called harrow it is also used to remove out the weeds manually here are the some examples of weed some more examples are like pig weed dandelions quick grass chick weed etc now standing crops need more protection from grazing animals also so we should or restrict it from entry into the farm by raising spiny hedge plants or fencing around the field now here is the another agriculture practice that is called harvesting now you know what is harvesting c cutting of crops after it is mature is called harvesting usually it takes 3 4 months for cereal crops to mature and it is done manually by sickle or by machine that is called harvester it has two parts thrashing and winnowing now what is thrashing the removing of grains from chaff is called thrashing and the separation of grains and chaff is also done by small farmers by using winnowing now we will study one by one both thrashing and winnowing now in this picture some men are doing harvesting by manually method so you can see from the picture after the crop is harvested the grains are separated from the chaff by a process is called thrashing so this is the method that generally used by the farmers to separate the grain from the stalk after harvest and the dried stalks are beaten or thrashed to separate the grains so in large form thrashing is done by using threshing machines now what are the uses of threshing it is used in many ways first to separate grain from stalks and the second one the stalks are beaten to free the grain stalks the another method which we are going to study that is winnowing components of a mixture are separated by wind or by blowing air is called winnowing 
and in winnowing the mixture is allowed to fall from a height the lightened component gets separated from the heavier ones because of wind or air blow you can see in the figure a woman is using the method that is called winnowing for separating the mixture by wind in this picture the seeds being heavier fall straight to the ground while the light husk and hay are blown a little farther away by the wind now in this figure you can see a machine that is called combiner it cuts the crop standing in the field thrashes it and separates husk from grains so the modern combine harvester or simply combiner is a versatile machine that means it perform many functions designed to efficiently harvest a variety of grain crops using this machine we can make our work easier as the name derives from its combining three separate harvesting operations reaping thrashing and winnowing into a single process as you can see in the figure now the last agriculture practice is storage safe storage of farm produce is the most important task and has to be done with all possible care the produce has to be saved from moisture worms rats microbes so after thrashing grains are dried in sun and then packed farmers store food grains in jute bags or metallic bins large scale storage is done in silos and granaries and stored in godowns and at domestic level dried neem leaves are also used now see in the picture that is silo so sufficiently dried grains are stored at a dry place grains are stored in metallic bins or on a large scale in air tight silos and made from mortar now here it is granaries grains may be purchased from the farmers on a large scale by food corporation a government agency they are put in gunny bags for easy transportation and are stored in big godowns that is called granaries though as we get most of our food from plants a good amount of food comes from animal source also so now in this topic we will study about animal husbandry so animal husbandry is the management and care of farm animals by humans for profit in which genetic qualities and behavior considered to be advantageous to humans are further developed the term can refer to the practice of selectively breeding and raising livestock to promote desirable traits in animals for utility sport pleasure or research so here you can see the picture where we will be taking care of the shelter proper food health and breeding so here are the some examples of food that is that we are getting from plants as well as that we are getting from animals plants food are watermelon banana peach pear etc and animals food are chicken cow duck snail goat etc so here are the some food which comes from animals like chicken fish meat milk cheese eggs and etc as you can see in this picture cows and buffaloes are the main source of milk in india and the milk yielding animals are also termed as dairy animals now poultry is the rearing of birds such as chicken cock hen eggs from birds are rich in proteins and a very big source of food as you can see in this picture honey comes from honeycomb and honeycomb is also called bee hive so now we will study about bee hive and honey see this is called a honeycomb and from where we are getting the honey yes honeycomb now this is called an apiary so rearing bees for honey is called apiculture 
For rearing bees on a commercial scale, special wooden boxes with shelves are placed in and around orchards. More than one colony of honeybees may develop in an apiary. We will talk about another topic that is nitrogen cycle. Have you ever heard word nitrogen? Yes, nitrogen is a gas which makes up the major portion of the air is needed by the organisms to survive. Now see in that figure how plants get oxygen. So nitrogen fixing bacteria transform atmospheric nitrogen into fixed nitrogen. It is an essential constituent of all biomolecules both in plants and in animals. Most of the plants obtain nitrogen from soil in the form of nitrate or ammonium ion, but it is limited. It consists 78% of molecular nitrogen, but plants unable to convert this molecular nitrogen into a useful form because they lack the enzyme nitrogenase. Only prokaryotic species possess this enzyme. Now we will learn about nitrogen fixation. It is a fixed in the roots of the legume. Actually, a group of bacteria called rhizobium that are located in legume plants does the fixing. In many ecosystems, this is very important process and it is accomplished of few other plants and some blue-green algae. Now, see the definition, the continuous sequence of natural process by which nitrogen in the atmosphere and nitrogenous compounds in the soil are converted as by nitrification and nitrogen fixation. Now, see the nitrogen cycle. First, it is done by the lightning then nitrate salts then it will be converted with the help of bacteria then again in the form of nitrogen gas. Here are major transformations of nitrogen. Nitrogen fixation, nitrification, denitrification and the last ammonification. The process of converting nitrogen into biologically available nitrogen is called nitrogen fixation. And these type of organism are of two. First free living and the second one is symbiosis. So the whole process required 8 electrons and at least 16 ATP. Now ammonification. You know what is an ammonification? When an organism excretes waste or dyes, the nitrogen in its tissues is in the form of organic nitrogen. Various fungi and prokaryotes then decompose the tissue and release inorganic nitrogen back into the ecosystem as ammonia is in the process known as ammonification. The ammonia then becomes available for uptake by plants and other microorganisms for growth. It is a part of the decaying process when a plant or animal dies, decomposes like fungi and bacteria, turn the nitrogen back into ammonium so it can re-enter the nitrogen cycle. Now the next is denitrification. Extra nitrogen in the soil gets put back out into the air. There are special bacteria that perform this task as well. Thank you.